Hi, Bree. How are you doing today? Hey, Sharif. I'm wonderful. Thank you. How are you? I am good. I am good. Thank you for asking. Um, thank you for participating in this quick interview for the uh, Morehouse College students. What I wanted to do is just have a very informal sort of interview um, between you and myself, and we'll just talk a little bit about your history and background. Does that work for you? Let's do it. All right. Wonderful. So, Bree, tell me a little bit about yourself. Where are you from? Sure. So my name is Bree Carranza, born and raised in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, which is a beautiful city, the confluence of three rivers in Pennsylvania. Okay. So tell me a little bit about how you first heard about software development and what were some of your initial thoughts? Sure. So I first heard about software development when I was a little kid and my dad gave me a laptop with Linux on it. And so that sort of introduced me to open source software, which led me to uh, how that software is created. And uh, that was very cool. I, it was really just seeding to user bin and allowing to see what programs are there and figuring out where it came from and how it's supposed to work and stuff like that. Nice, nice. So, so if you heard about it as a kid, how did you first get into it? I mean, actually sort of just using it. Sure. So um, as a teenager, what I thought was fun was um, hanging out on Launchpad uh, and Responding, responding to issues where possible, but the first thing I really did that was software development -y was tr uh, doing translations for issues. And that forced me to learn about bazaar and version control and how someone on the internet with an idea actually makes an idea like go through a system and then that idea is converted into something that appears in the software. Um, it didn't really start doing software development professionally until much longer after that. Um, and it was always a little bit tangential to what I, my, my actual role. Okay. Nice. Nice. So um, either uh, in college or at a later time, did you ever participate in uh, software development internships, whether in undergrad or grad school? So internships are uh, one of my favorite things to talk about. Um, I started doing internships uh, when I was 16, as soon as I legally could work. And I did that all through high school and all through college. And it is one of the best decisions I ever made. Um, it taught me a lot about technology and software development, but also about the workplace and what it means to be an adult. It taught me about compassion and empathy and things that we don't really always talk about um, in a lecture, but are really super important in the workplace. Um, so the first internship that I had, I was started out doing network engineering and worked my way up from physically pulling cables to eventually being able to type things and change things. So that was exciting. Nice, nice. So what were you typing and changing? Sure, so uh, my internship was so cool. I worked in the Blue Room, which was just this lab and I had replicas of all of our production equipment in the lab that I could just play with. Uh, so what I was responsible, one of the projects I did was, <sighs> I uh, set up a free BSD machine with a bunch of physical NICs because that was the way you had to do things at the time. And I modified the pipes and cues uh, within the machine to replicate our global network. So for example, there's an application that is physically hosted in Pittsburgh, but there are people in Dubai who need to access it. Well, the network connection between here and Dubai, I, I wanna replicate that within this one room. So that was, the first big project um, that I did for my internship. And another thing I did was we, uh, so a thing called Squid Web Proxy. Right. And so I worked on a plan for how we would implement that in production and test it. And we implemented it and it did caching for people which sped up their internet connection sufficiently that they reached out to IT saying, did we get a bandwidth upgrade? I was like, no, the caching is just working really well. Um, I would tell you these examples will give you a little bit of insight into when this was, but uh, that's what I was doing. And I thought it was super fun. Nice, nice. So then help me understand that transition from an internship to your first job out of college. Sure. Um, so my first job out of undergrad was working at a web hosting company. And I would honestly say to you that I wouldn't have been like a the best candidate for that role if I hadn't learned so many of these like basics in my internship. Uh, so in the internship, I learned things that we look at as fundamentals, but like the importance of a backup, 
this is what happens when you don't have a backup and you have a problem. Mm -hmm. um, so I got to do some of that like on the job learning with more of a safe space. So that way, when I was ready for a, you know, post internship job, I had experience okay. doing things, even though I had recently graduated from college. Okay. And so with the web hosting, what were you doing? Sure. Uh, so, okay. So it was not a global organization, but we had 24 seven support. So I worked nights and that let me do things like respond to tickets, meaning, um, you know, WordPress isn't working properly. Can you help me fix it? Fix a PHP permissions problem. But it was also things like uh, we would get a notification that a specific mail server had 70,000 messages in the outbound mail queue. An alert is raised and my job was to figure out why there were so many messages in the outbound mail queue. And that was really uh, what sparked my interest in cybersecurity uh, because a lot of what I was doing in that role was basically incident response. Someone's done something that they shouldn't have done, please find it and stop it. Um, so it was a lot of that kind of thing. I learned about web shells. I learned about the, you know, the importance of uh, web security and why, you know, 777 is bad and stuff like that. So it was, it was also very fun. Nice, nice. Good stuff. <laughs> so then tell me, because you also went to grad school. I, I linked and stalked you a little bit. So tell me about that transition to from uh, working to then deciding I want to go back to grad school and then from grad school into your career path now. Sure. So I had the great fortune to, after my time at the web hosting company, uh, work at Carnegie Mellon University where they have a tuition remission program. So it was kind of a new brain. I'm a very school oriented kind of a person. So I was like, hey, I work here and I can take classes here and not have to pay. This is super exciting. So I'm definitely going to do that. Um, I It was important to me to make sure that I could excel in my coursework and excel in my professional work and not have the two interacting with one another. So I did take it slow at first to make sure I could make it all work. Um, it was really interesting though, I had a cybersecurity role and I was learning cybersecurity. So I got to sort of apply what I was learning in real life and have this feedback loop that was awesome. Nice. Yeah. Nice. So then tell me a little bit then about your transition from grad school to working at GitLab? Sure. So um, after grad school, I realized that I wanted to be solving different kinds of problems. Um, I, you know, was hearing so much about DevOps and using GitLab personally and just finding it very, very fun and wanting to do more. I started reading about GitLab as a company and it just felt like a, a good fit for me. So now that I'm here at GitLab, I get to apply what I learned in grad school about cybersecurity. So people will write in about, hey, uh, there's a post about this vulnerability in GitLab, how do I mitigate it? And I can talk to you all day about vulnerability management and I can talk about what that means specifically within the context of GitLab. Um, yeah, does that answer the question? It does. It, does. it okay. actually leads me to my next one then. Perfect. So, so let's dive a little bit deeper into what it is you do exactly here at GitLab. Okay. What's your title? Sure. So I'm a support engineer at GitLab. That means that the primary thing I do is uh, look at requests from people who are using GitLab and help them configure GitLab to work in the way they want it to work or troubleshoot um, any problems that may exist in their existing GitLab environment uh, to get it back into good working order. Uh, so that can sometimes mean helping to understand, GitLab may not do today exactly what the customer wants it to do for their specific use case, but I have the power to say, okay, with the way GitLab is implemented today, no, but let me help you put together a feature proposal that's well-formed and guide the direction of the product to help meet your needs. And that I think is very exciting to me. I, I know what I loved about GitLab as a developer. And so to be able to, for a living, help people find that enthusiasm about GitLab, it's very fun. Nice, good stuff. And how long have you been doing this for here at GitLab? I started GitLab in May of 2020. Okay, so within the past few months, right? Yes, okay. yes. Okay. And I think you, you might have touched upon this a little bit earlier, but let's let's dive back into 
What is it about cybersecurity that sort of compels you to go down that path? Um, what is it? Uh, it was just fascinating. It, it, it was, it, it just is one of those things that I'm very interested by. My eyes were open to it when I, when it went from being a thing that happens in the abstract to this is real. And these are, this is what it means for people on a daily basis. Um, I think that that was really what did it for me, seeing that it's not just a thing that that somebody needs to worry about, mm -hmm. but everyone plays a role. It touches everything that you do every day. Even if your primary role is not a cybersecurity role, you still have some part to play. Right, exactly, exactly. Yeah. So what do you think made you attractive to GitLab? Because you've been here recently, right? Mm -hmm. You said mm -hmm. about six months. So take us back, right? To prior to you going to the interview process, right? So you recognize like, all right, GitLab is this particular company that, you know, is doing some really cool things in the DevOps space. What do you think made GitLab say, Brie, she's really doing some cool things right here. We want to make her a part of our team. What had you picked up? What were you working on? What skills did you have that made you attractive? Sure. So I think that one of the primary things was a um, solid uh, command of Linux systems administration and systems engineering. That's a thing like that I mentioned I've been doing for a couple of decades and I take for granted, but it's not something that everyone has. So I think that that was a big thing that helped. Um, I also had experience with different kinds of file systems and that teaches you just a different way of thinking that turns out to be super useful. Um, we have people, we have customers who are using NFS. I have experience administering NFS, so I can say, hey, even though this isn't related to GitLab, I know X, Y, and Z about NFS. So based on that, we need to explore this route. Um, previous experience with Git, SVN, CVS, other version control solutions, I think was definitely uh, helpful. Um, I think those are the big things. Oh, no, that sounds awesome. I'd hire you. Cool, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So now you've been here six months. What are some of the things that you've picked up here in just six months? What additional skills, things like that that you've been able to build upon that you didn't have previously? Uh, so a lot of different things, right? Um, <laughs> if I had to boil it down, let's see. Um, I'm much stronger at like reading Ruby. Ruby was not a programming language I was familiar with when I came to GitLab. I'm more of a Python and a Golang kind of a person. So much better at reading Ruby than I was when I started. So that's exciting. Um, definitely stronger with Git. I was, I thought I was pretty good with Git when I started and um, much better now. So that's exciting. Uh, Kubernetes. When I started at GitLab, I knew that Kubernetes was something that I needed to learn more about. And there's enough requests about it that I've learned so much about Kubernetes in my time here. I sort of thinking back to the question that you asked before, I have experience with cluster administration, not Kubernetes, but clusters in general. So learning Kubernetes, I've been helped by having the Linux background and by having like exposure to clusters. So my time at GitLab has helped me with picking up Kubernetes and that's exciting. I'm also much stronger with interacting with APIs, HTTP verbs, JQ. I love JQ, it's a lot of fun and I, had a fairly simple JQ workflow when I started at GitLab. I have a whole list of JQ snippets and stuff like that now. It's very exciting. Nice, nice. Yeah. So take me back to your 20 year old self, right? And okay. so what would you tell your 20 year old self right now? What advice would you give them? Give, give to yourself, excuse me. Right, right. Um, I would tell the 20 year old me to be patient things take time. I would also tell her to be courageous. I think that uh, you, it's important to learn the things that you can affect and things you can't affect. If it's something you can do something about, be bold and be courageous. When it gets to a point where it's on someone else, learn patience. Uh, the other thing I would say is it's important to have a plan, mm -hmm. but it's important to recognize that opportunities come where you don't expect them. So be open to that plan changing. Nice. I, okay. And 
Now let's take that same advice and apply it to the students who may be watching this now in their current world in 2021. What advice would you give them? So I would give them the same thing. I would also, uh, so when I was graduating CMU, I gave a little speech to audition to be the student speaker. And something that I said there, if you'll forgive me for quoting myself, sticks with me. And it was about curiosity. I think that curiosity is one of the most important characteristics to cultivate. Mm -hmm. um, and part of this, myself for it is this, you, if you don't know something, there's like two things you can do. You can learn it or not. Um, so choose the learn it option or live with, I don't know it and I chose not to learn it. That's okay too, but recognize like that's in your control. Yeah, awesome, awesome. So any other, anything else you'd like to say to uh, the students who are watching this now? Um, I would say make, make the best use of the time that you have and the educational environment that you're in. Educational environments are absolutely incredible. Find the programs, advisors, mentors, books, whatever that will help you get to where you want to go. Awesome. Well, wonderful. We are just at time. Bree, thank you so much for your time. It has been greatly appreciated. Thank you. Thank you Bye very God. much. Thank you.